Hey, it's Drew Lines Miometer, and I'm going to demonstrate here in a minute and give you the code for using Google Translate, using their API. So the Google API for translating is awesome. I saw a free version of the Google Translate thing on the website, which you can use browser calls for doing the stuff, and so it'd be free, but sometimes there's some delays, this and that, and using their API, it's also, unless you hit a threshold, it's still free. You do have to get your own key, though, so you're, I'm going to cover that. But let's jump into this code here in a second. Meanwhile, if you could like this video, I'd really appreciate it. Help me out. And let's get going. All right. So in the translate, I have uh, several different functions that I'm using here. And this is because I've been helping a local business that, and they don't really speak English well. So I've been using Google Translate to get what they write me. They text me and I'll display it uh, in English. They're sending it in Spanish and then I convert it, use I'll reply back and then um, send them back Spanish. So, um, for me, control shift T. So I just up here, I'm reading in my authorization, my API key, which I have hidden. So I can share this whole script. It doesn't matter. Um, again, you'll have to get your own API key and I'll give you the URLs here, which you can go look up on how to get one and, and apply for one or, you know, you register one. Um, I have, I don't, because I'm having this thing running all the time, I have the system tray icon hidden. Uh, there's a single instance force, which you should know what that is, forces it to only run once. And if, I don't actually remember if I still have, it looks like sometimes I do, I'm restoring the clipboard. Because I'm utilizing the clipboard, just because I was lazy and didn't find a better way to do this, I'm borrowing my clipboard, and then I like at times shoving the old content back into the clipboard so it doesn't remove what was in my clipboard. Now this gets selected text. Again, because I'm calling it twice, the control shift T is going to translate. So for me, the T is for translating from English to Spanish. And then control shift B is just a back. It's like a reverse translate for me. So for Spanish to English. Now we're going to keep walking through this linearly. So get selected text. So that means it jumps down to here. It says, oh, okay, let's, let's store the clipboard all into clipboard backup. Let's blank it. We're going to send the control C. So send a copy and then wait for what to one second for something to be inside the clipboard, right? For it to detect it. If it doesn't detect it, it's going to return and just stop the process because if it didn't find selected text, then I don't want to keep moving forward. So when it finishes that, it's going to come back and now has the content that was selected. So this would be like this, this would be selected. Um, and then it does the API call function, which actually has the call to another function inside of it. So let me explain this query string builder, which you can see down here, right? I'm passing it key value pairs. Now, hopefully you're familiar with objects. If not, um, it's in, I think, my intermediate auto hockey course, or I have other courses on objects, um, I'm sorry, videos on objects on the automator. Uh, but here we can see source is ES. Now ES is the, the short code for like Spanish, right? Um, and the target, which is source is what language is it coming in in? What the target is what I want to translate it into. And that's EN for English right, for the U.S. English, and you can go look these up. There's a lookup table somewhere. If you just start looking for two-letter code, you know, language abbreviations, you'll find this really long, long, long list. And then I pass the key, the word key, with my API key, and then I'm passing Q for the query with the clipboard, right? So it's passing each of those things. That jumps down into my query string builder because APIs they, they want to send key value pairs. And if the very first one needs to be like your, in this case, it might be actually, I think it'll be alphabetical. So, um, target, sorry, so I would say, because that's Q and this is K. Oh, sorry. So the very first one would be the key because that's the lowest letter if it does alphabetize it. So it would send key. And then because it's the first time through, it would put a question mark and then it would append my, um, a my API key. And then it will send, it looks like source and then an ampersand and then ES. And that's because in here I have a ternary, uh, which is just a fancy way to do some logic. If it's the first time through, use the question mark. After that, use the ampersand, right? So that's what this solves. And here we have the A and the B. This is the key value pair. So it's going to put key equals this and then Q equals clipboard, right? That's what's going to happen down in here. It's going to build my query string as a string and return that up to here and then do the API call. Now the API call is going to jump down into this function, passing the query string. Now, because the endpoint doesn't change, I just hard coded that. Also, I hard coded it's a get request. If you're new to API keys, we have a great webinar on it and I have a lot of videos on APIs, API calls, web service API calls to be more specific. Uh, in here though, really all I needed to change was this query string, right? So I figured I'm going to hard code these and not have them change. We're using the win HTTP request. So this is the, 
Um, it's basically a way for you to go connect to a server and submit a query, and then you capture what gets returned. So here is where we submit the query at this endpoint. This is called your endpoint. Um, and we send it. We get the response back. Now this response text, that's going to be the text value. And it's actually, if I remember right, oh yeah, it's a JSON. Um, and I take the JSON, shove it into an AutoHotKey object, and then I know just from studying the JSON, this is what I want, right? I only want this thing, and that'll be the text that gets translated. So let's do an example here. Um, I, said, it's, I think it's always running. I'm going to launch it just to make sure. Um, and let's say, actually, you know what? Let's add, eh, not there. Let's do it up here. I might even have it up at the top here. Nope. So I'm going to comment it out, otherwise it can get confusing. So if I said, good morning, and now I'm going to highlight this and hit control shift T. So it, it went, did that API call, returned that back, buenos dias, good morning, right? Um, and so what I, what I should have finished here was it does the API call, returns it back, gets the text, and then I have it sleep just so it, it waits just for a second, um, sends control V, I shouldn't say second because that's two tenths of a second, um, sends control V, and you want to make sure you really are good about this before you restore your clipboard value, make sure this has at least, I think it's most people say like 50, but who cares, right? I put it at 300 because if it tries to restore your clipboard too fast, it ends up um, replacing it with the original clipboard, or I'm sorry, with it, it does it so fast, sorry, what happens is it sends the control V after you restore the clipboard, so you send the original, it's really confusing, so just make sure you have um, a sleep after you send the paste, otherwise it'll say, hey, okay, paste, and before it can actually paste, it restores your clipboard to the original, and it's really confusing. So um, that's the translating from English to Spanish. However, once I get the Spanish version, now this also, I am literally swapping out, you saw it change the text here. Why is that? Well, because in my text program, and I'm in this case, I'm using the, the app here, um, the phone, your phone, but a terrible name um, on Windows. And so I can just, this way I can type here and hit Control Shift T and it's going to swap it out in this for me, right? Which is how I want to use this. Um, well, if I get replies, the thing is, if I want to translate his reply, that's what I sent him, it's still in Spanish, so it doesn't matter. But I couldn't swap it out because this is not an edit field. So I have it throw up a tooltip. So if I hit Control Shift B, this is highlighted. Then it then I'll stop by in the afternoon, maybe around three. So that just did that translation for me, um, and we could take the Buenos Dias and do it back here. Control Shift B. Uh, good morning. Now it shows you that, right? Um, this is almost exactly the front end's all exactly the same. I have a hotkey, triggers to get selected text, triggers my API call and the query uh, selector query string builder. Um, except for here, I'm saying the source is Spanish and translate it into English, right? And this is where objects are amazing once you get used to them. This is a storage vehicle. Um, but here I say, okay, let's let's start a tooltip with what's returned. Um, give it a little bit of time to sleep. Restore the clipboard and wait a little bit longer for three seconds just so I can read it. I can adjust this or I could throw this in a message box if it gets to where I, I want to have it where I can decide when to tell it okay. But it's that simple of a script. So I'm going to make this available. I'll put the download somewhere over my head or something. Um, I hope it helps. Uh, APIs are just amazing tools. It's, it's so cool that with AutoHotKey we can connect to APIs and play with them. And I hope this was really helpful. Remember, please like that. And uh, add some comments here if you're confused on something or if you found something you know not helpful or if you would change. What I would probably do to make this more generic is have a GUI. Isaiah isn't available at the moment, unfortunately. But I would have two side-by-side -side GUIs, one in English, one in Spanish, and just have it where I would go in and hit a button on the bottom of each one, type in one field, you know, hit a button, have it translate for me, uh, maybe dump it into the other one so I can see that. Um, but this was just a simple one that I'm using it so much in the texting, I wanted something closer to have it tied to the texting where it's super easy to use. So hope that helps. Cheers. Hey, thank you for watching that video. And if you just enjoyed that, you probably aren't at a beginning level. And I highly recommend you work through the Intermediate Auto Hockey course. You can see the URL over my head here, which will give you a coupon discount. And you learn a lot of, you know, more advanced things of working with controls, loops, and functions, and objects.
There's a lot of great stuff with file paths and, and then what you can do. Auto hockey is an amazing tool. The uh, having the course will help you have a direction of where to go and a, and a flow and a work through. Because otherwise, we kind of learn auto hockey here and there, and it gets to be a big ball of mess. Um, so the, our, having the course helps you make sure you work through it in a, in a systematic way. I hope you enjoy it. Cheers.